Chairman, good afternoon. Let's firstly talk about the Paul Cox era, an era which ended last week. What are your final reflections of Paul Cox's time in charge with us? Um, his time in charge was good for the club. I mean, uh, he took over when the club was um, in a bit of dire straits as far as still not being in the Football League. And um, he managed to put a team together that got us out of that league. And then we, when we came back into the league, he, he managed to get us up to 11th place in our first season there. So, you know, as far as Paul Cox is concerned, you know, it was a good era and it was a good, it was a good period for the club. But, you know, there comes a time, you know, you know sometimes there comes a time when change is needed. And I think Paul felt that himself. And, you know, when me and Paul got that, you know, sat down together, you know, we agreed between ourselves that, you know, Paul needed a bit of a break and the, the club really could do a little bit of change to see if we could progress any further. Not to say that Paul Cox couldn't have taken any further, but I think that, you know, Paul probably needed a little bit of a break um, so that he could recharge his batteries. But, uh, you know, at the moment, now my interests are in finding a new manager and replacement for Paul Cox. The search for a new manager now begins. Where are you at in that process? Well, we've had quite a few applicants in and we've shortlisted down to six um, at the moment. Um, we're interviewing next week, uh, I think Tuesday next week, uh, the board are going to do the interviews um, and we'll, we'll be clear and possibly be able to announce um, next either next Wednesday or Thursday is when we'll announce the new manager. But at the moment, um, Adam's, you know, Adam's there as caretaker manager. Um, he's not thrown his hat into the ring yet, but he might be interested and so, you know, there's... Yeah, it's you know I, I know the, the the six people that are in there at the moment. I'm not going to I'm not going to put them live on camera, but there are some good candidates in there that have had a lot of experience. What deliberations have you made when whittling down those applicants to a shortlist? Well, I've looked this time for someone that um, has got the connections that the club might need to uh, take it beyond uh, the League Two and uh, into League One and possibly to the championship. So, you know, I mean, I'm looking for someone with a little bit of experience. Um, so, you know, Paul Cox was here and he'd only had uh, conference football experience. He's had league experience with us. I'm probably looking for someone that's had a, quite a bit more league experience. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to um, narrow my scope um, to, to a, a short field. Uh, you know, my, my, my scope is quite wider than the manager I'm looking at. So I'm not going to you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to have a, a manager with league experience and next week I could bring someone on that's got no league experience. It could be a banker's for all you know. So as far as you're concerned, it's wide open? It is wide open between the six candidates that um, have been shortlisted, yeah. What specific qualities are you looking for in your next manager? Uh, ambition. I want a manager that's ambitious, OK? But your manager will say they are ambitious, but there are... Some that, uh, you know, we all know that there are some managers out there that go from job to job to job to job. Um, so I'm looking for someone that um, has got that loyalty mode in them and will stay at the club for a few years. I don't like, as a chairman, I don't like to get rid of managers quickly. I like to give them a chance and uh, um, hopefully they'll go on and take the club to, to a different level. How attractive would you say this post is? Well, I'm going to try and make it very attractive. You know, the, the problem, the, the, there's only one problem the club has at the moment, and this is an issue that we need to take up um, with possibly Nottingham Council at the moment, is the fact that um, we've not got a training ground. And so, you know, we could do with the, the politicians of Mansfield and Nottinghamshire getting behind the football club a little bit and, and helping us sort out. You know, I'm prepared to pay for it and get it all sorted, but we just want to get ourselves a dedicated training area for the football club because that, you know, that hurts us a little bit at the moment. But... Uh, yeah, the club is ambitious. We want an ambitious manager, and so it, it should be attractive. We, we should be able to attract some quality in. This question perhaps might be a little premature, but with regards to your next manager, would you look to put him on a contract towards the end of the season, or would it be beyond that? And, stroke or, would it depend on the candidate? It would totally depend on the candidate, Steve. It would be t depend on the candidate. Different, you know, different contracts with different managers, I guess. What about Adam Murray then? He's played down his chances of even wanting the job at this stage. He's played it quite low-key from what we see in the press. Has he got a chance of becoming manager? Uh, he's had no experience. Um, he's only played, uh, what, he's played one game, one league game for the club as a manager, um, as assistant manager. You know, I think what Adam said, that he can't manage and play. 
um, but he wants to get himself out there on the playing field again. And, you know, he's, he's young at the moment. He's, he's very early 30s and um, he's one of our fittest members uh, on the football field. You know, he's, he, he, he still wants to be out there and captain the side. The next manager, whoever it will be, will be your fourth manager here at Mansfield Town Football Club. Is this process of selecting managers any easier as time goes on? Well, I didn't select uh, Dave Holling Hollingsworth. So. I beg your pardon, he was under your charge, though. Yeah, yeah Dave Hollingsworth was under my charge. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, as a chairman of a football club, you make mistakes. If, if I if go back, I probably wouldn't have got rid of David as early as I did, and I was put under pressure that I should, I should have ignored um, and go with my own instincts. Um, but, uh, you know, we are where we are at this moment in time, and, you know, five years in charge, you know, coming up to six years, um, four managers, but you know it's only three managers really. So it's a two-year stint, which Paul had four of them years. So you know the managers do get a, a long run with me, and uh, you know I do do put quite a bit of TLC into them. So what type of relationship do you like to have with your manager? Give us an insight into that. You've got to have someone that you can trust and get on with, and someone that's going to you know watch you back. I mean this you know, football um, for chairman is. Um, it's a very aggressive sport as far as the financial purse strings are concerned. So you do, do you need a, you do need a manager that can be a little bit prudent and uh, can keep an eye on budgets and things. Um, but when you're going for it, he's got the right contacts to bring the right people in um, for when you've got a chance of getting promoted or a chance of, um, you know, if you're fighting for your life, so to speak. When you meet with the candidates next week, Chairman, what do you think you'll be asking of them? What will be the burning question? Well, they'll all be doing a presentation um, of why they want the job, um, and then we'll be looking to see, you know, how they want, would like their contracts panning out and what ambitions they have. So, but I mean, I'm going to keep that. I mean, they'll probably watch this video, so I don't want to preempt them on what I'm going to be asking them. Looking at the bigger picture, your aim still remains, does it, to get this club into the championship as soon as possible? Yeah, three aims, get the ground back, get back into the league and get into the championship. I've only got one to do, so we're on our way, aren't we? Let's hope so. Finally, what would you say to the supporters at this stage? Supporters, you know, the, the loyal supporters that come every week, you know, they're fantastic. I know there's a lot more football supporters out there in Mansfield that support Mansfield Town. I do need you coming to the ground, OK? We've got this um, £7 offer on for the next three games, you know. Please, show me support. Show me that I'm not uh, flogging a dead horse here. Let's get to the ground. Let's get behind the team. And uh, let's show the rest of the towns in England what Mansfield Town's made of. Come on, you stags. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman John Radford, thank you. Cheers, Steve. Thank you.